everyone, I am here today with my August book haul. As usual, I've got far too many books to show you. In fact, I've got 51 books to show you today. Three of them are physical books, 10 of them are books I bought on Kindle, and so that leaves us with the rest being net galley books. I need, I need to stop myself. I need to ban myself from requesting books or something, it's getting out of hand. So yeah, let's jump into the physical books first. I've had a voucher sitting around on my bookcase for quite some time now to go and spend anywhere, but naturally I wanted to go and spend it on books. So I finally got around to spending it and I picked up quite an animal themed selection here without even sort of really trying. So the first book I purchased was A Dog's Purpose by Bruce Cameron. And this has been turned into a film. I've not seen the film yet. I will probably want to. So I thought I'd better pick up the book ASAP and give it a read. What I didn't realize when I was buying this book is I actually already own it on Kindle and have done for about three years. So that was a fail, but how can we resist that cute cover anyway? It'd be really nice to own this wonderful cover in physical copy and I'm sure I'll end up enjoying it because I love books about dogs and this is apparently the remarkable story of one dog's search for his purpose over the course of several lives. More than just another charming dog story, a dog's purpose touches on the universal search for an answer to life's most basic question, why are we here? The second book I picked up was one of a slightly different sort of topic actually and that was Catching a Serial Killer by Stephen Fulcher. And this is a non-fiction account of basically this officer's experience of tracking a real-life serial killer. And so it says on the back here, On the evening of Saturday the 19th of March 2011, De Detective Superintendent Stephen Fulcher received a life-changing call that thrust him into a race against time to save a missing 22-year-old girl. What followed was an intense investigation in a cat and mouse pursuit that led Steve to the discovery of two bodies. Catching a serial killer is a thrilling and devastating look at a real life murder case and potentially one of the UK's most prolific serial killers. And if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that I really enjoy a good thriller, I really enjoy reading about serial killers, I really enjoy reading about Jack the Ripper and that filters into true crime as well so I can't wait to pick this up and see what this is like. The final book that I got from the bookshop I feel was a real real steal. I've not actually taken the sticker off yet so when I hold this up you will agree that like what a steal. Five pounds for a beautiful large hardback book of one of my favourite books of all time and if you are not aware of a street, street cat named Bob and this actually had the first two books so it has a street cat named Bob, The World According to Bob and these are both by James Bowen and again this is a true story this is James's account of when he was on the streets a lot busking and selling the big issue while trying to get his life sorted because he'd been homeless before that he'd been on drugs and he was now trying to get himself into a drug program to wean himself off heroin and to turn his life around and that's when he meets Bob and Bob is such an adorable character. I recently watched the film of this as well. I've read all three of these books before anyway, but I read, watched the film recently too, and oh, I just, I love Bob so much, and I think it's such an inspirational story, and I really need to meet these two. Really need to. I would especially love to meet Bob, obviously, because he's really cute, but I'm just as eager to meet James, because I really want to get to know the guy behind this. So with that, let's move on to the Kindle books. The first book I bought on Kindle was The Bees by Leyline Paul, I hope I'm saying that right, and this is a book that I've often seen around quite a lot and I'm not really entirely sure what it's actually about, but it was in my wish list and so I was like, oh 99p, buy it. Then I picked up a free Kindle book because it's a book that I've been seeing around an awful lot and that was Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Walsh. And this is a YA novel that I've been seeing around a lot and the cover is gorgeous. I don't know an awful lot about this one at all but it looks a really cute book. I've heard good things about it. Next we have The Watchmaker's Daughter by CJ Archer. Again this is another one that I picked up for free on Kindle. That cover really really stood out to me. I don't actually know what this one's about either. But at least I didn't pay anything for it. 
Then we have Secrets That She Left Behind by Diane Chamberlain. And I recently pulled out a Diane Chamberlain book from my TBR bucket. And it made me go and double check that I own all the author's works because I love her books. And I realised I didn't own this one and it was 99p so I grabbed it. Next, another author that I've been auto buying, even though I've only read one of her books. And I bought a bunch the other month and now this month some more of hers were on offer for 99p. So I grabbed all of these books by J.A. Jantz. So we have got Damage Control, Trial by Fury, Outlaw Mountain. Oh, that was it. Just those three. So... They are all sort of crime mystery themed novels. I don't know much about them beyond that though. Then I recently watched a video from Maddie and B over at Heart Full of Books about their Jacqueline Wilson collection. And I really enjoyed that video and it made me realise that I've read a lot of Jacqueline Wilson. I even still own one Jacqueline Wilson book on my shelf, I believe. But I wanted to check out some more of her books, even at my age. I don't feel like I'm too old to read Jacqueline Wilson. So I went and added a bunch of them to my Kindle wish list. And this one here was 99p and that was at Butterfly Beach. It's not one I'm familiar with, but all the same, I'm sure it'd be great because it's Jacqueline Wilson. Then in similar vein, it made me start thinking about authors who I read a lot when I was younger. And it made me think of the Animal Arc series. So I started adding a load of those to my wish list. And in the meantime, I also discovered another book by this author and thought I'd give it a go. So this is Summer at Hope Meadows, book one by Lucy Daniels. Then again, from my TBR bucket, I pulled out a book and it turned out to be the second in a series. And I wasn't sure whether I could read that book without reading the first one. And then I realized that the first one was quite short and I got decent reviews on Goodreads anyway. So I went and picked it up and that was Shame On You by Tara Sivek. And that was it for my Amazon purchases. So I feel like I did really well at not buying many books in August. Now I just need to tone down the requesting of books. And here we shall move on to the NetGalley books that I requested and received in the month of August. First we have Satellite by Nick Lake. And this is a YA novel. And it's described as being The Martian for Teens, an epic, highly original space thriller with real science and heartbreaking beauty. Then we have The Art of Hiding by Amanda Prowse. And this is an adult novel. And it looks really interesting as well, actually. It says, Nina McCarrick has it all. A loving husband, two beautiful boys, a well-appointed home, and more time than she knows what to do with. Life is perfect until her husband Finn is killed in a car accident and everything Nina thought she could rely on unravels. Then we have The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. And this one doesn't come out until the 11th of January, but the cover really stood out to me. That cover just catches your eye, doesn't it? And then when I read what it was about, I was even more intrigued. So it says here, the chalk man is coming. Looking back, it all started on the day of the fair and the terrible accident. When 12 year old Eddie first met the chalk man. It was chalk man who gave Eddie the idea for the drawings, a way to leave secret messages between his group of friends. And it was fun to start with until the figures led them to the body of a young girl. That was 30 years ago and Ed thought the past was behind him. Then he receives a letter containing just two things, a piece of chalk and a drawing of a stick figure. As history begins to repeat itself, Ed realises the game was never over and oh my goodness, how good does that sound seriously? Next we have Hortense and the Shadow by Natalia O'Hara and Lauren O'Hara. And this comes out in October and this is a children's fiction, possibly picture book. Since it's not currently available on Kindle, I've got to download this one onto my laptop. But it says, through the dark and wolfish woods, through the white and silent snow, lived a little girl called Hortense. Though kind and brave, she was sad as an owl because of one thing. Hortense hated her shadow. A beautifully illustrated dark fairy tale that reminds you of the fables you read as a child. A treasure not to be missed. So this one looks really cute. I can't wait to give this one a go. Then we have Here and Gone by Helen Beck. And this is an adult mystery thriller novel. I'm not gonna read this one out to you because with thrillers you never really know whether they've put too much in the description and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But that cover really, really called out to me. Then we have I Am Behind You by John Advide Lindqvist. And this comes out this month. And this is described as being the new Stephen King, a magician of genre fiction. And this is an adult horror novel. So it says, Molly wakes her mother to go to the toilet. The campsite is strangely blank. The toilet block has gone. Everything else has gone too. This is a place with no sun, no God. Just four families remain. Each has done something to bring them here. Each denies they deserve it. 
until they see what's coming over the horizon, moving irrevocably towards them. Their worst mistake, their darkest fear, and just for one of them, their homecoming. So this looks really messed up. It's described as being terrifying. I hope it is terrifying. I'm still looking for books that truly terrify me. Then we have Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. And I've seen so many fantastic things about this book. The best review I've seen on it by Miles that can do a lot better job of explaining this book than what I probably ever could is by Amanda over at Cook Read Create. So I'll leave a link to her review here and also in the description because it's just fantastic. Then we have This Mortal Coil by Emily Savada. And this is a YA mystery thriller novel that I've been hearing quite a bit about. And just to sort of briefly fill you in, it says three billion lives at stake, two people who can save them, one secret hidden in their DNA. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. That caught my eye and I can't wait to get stuck into that one. It comes out in November. Then we have Boy to Girl by Terence Blacker. And this is a story about Matthew's American cousin who comes to live with them. Sam's small, blonde and wild with a giant attitude problem. He immediately starts to wreak havoc on Matthew's social life, getting into fights with his friends and causing a scene wherever they go out. School is about to start and Matthew and his friends don't want these problems to continue. So they come up with a plan for Sam to prove his loyalty to their gang and to trick the mean girls at school. They dare Sam to go to school for the first week as a girl. Told from the viewpoint of each of the characters, some funny, some conceited, and some achingly sad. And I liked the idea that this gave you loads of different viewpoints on this, and this will be a really interesting read, I think. Next we have God's Grave by Jay Kristoff, and this is the second book in his series of which... What is the series called? The Nevernight Chronicles. I've not read the first one, I do own it. I know. Problem. Then we have Alone by Sin Balog. This is a YA mystery thriller. It says, when her mum inherits an old crumbling mansion, Sed is almost excited to spend the summer there. The grounds are beautiful and it's fun to explore the sprawling house with its creepy rooms and secret passages. Except now her mum wants to renovate rather than sell the estate, which means they're not going back to the city or Cedar's friends and school. As the days grow shorter, Cedar is filled with dread. They're about to be cut off from the outside world and she's not sure she can handle the solitude or the darkness it brings out in her. Then a group of teens get stranded near the mansion during a blizzard and Cedar has no choice but to offer them shelter, even though she knows danger lurks in the dilapidated mansion and in herself. And as the snow continues to fall, what Cedar fears most is about to become her reality. Next we have Lies That She Told by Kate Hollahan. And this is an adult mystery thriller novel, so I'm not going to tell you anything about this one because I don't want to potentially spoil it. Then we have Invictus by Ryan Grodin. And this is the author who did the Wolf by Wolf series and duology even. And I've heard fantastic things about this book. I can't wait to get stuck into this one and it comes out later this month. Then we have Best Day Ever by Kara Ruder. And this is an adult mystery thriller novel. I will just briefly fill you in because this one says behind closed doors meets Leanne Moriarty in this creepy fast-paced psychological thriller and it says a loving husband the perfect killer Paul Strom has spent years building his little perfect life a glittering career beautiful wife two healthy boys and a big house in the suburbs but he also has his secrets that's why Paul has promised his wife a romantic weekend getaway however Paul loves his wife he really does but he also wants to get rid of her. And with every hour that passes, Paul ticks off another stage in his elaborately laid plan. Like, how messed up does that sound? Then we have The Wicked Cometh by Laura Carlin. And this comes out on the 8th of February, so we are miles away from this one yet. But this one is a historical fiction, and it says, The year is 1831. Down the murky alleyways of London, acts of unspeakable wickedness are taking place, and no one is willing to speak out on behalf of the city's vulnerable poor as they disappear from the streets. Out of these shadows comes Hester White, a bright young woman who is desperate to escape the slums by any means possible. Next we have The Thousandth Floor, which someone had recommended quite recently and I saw that and I was like oh that sounds fantastic so I absolutely had to pick this up and this one is set in Manhattan in 2118 and it's a thousand story tower stretching into the sky a glittering version of the future where anything is possible if you want it enough and like each layer of the building is different like social class thing the higher you are in the building the like 
better off you are, I think, if I remember correctly. But I was really, really excited to hear about this one. And the sequel is also later on in this haul as well, I think. Next we have Reach for the Stars by Colleen Coleman. And this is just like a kind of chiclet kind of book. I just saw it, that cover reached out as being quite a fun read. And so, yeah. When Evelyn Dooley married her high school sweetheart James, she thought she was set for life. Now she's 28 single and fleeing to Dublin from her small hometown to avoid the gossip surrounding their breakup. Next we have The Truth and Lies of Ella Black by Emily Barr. And I've been hearing so much about this one. This one is a YA contemporary novel. And this one is about Ella Black, who seems to live the life most other 17-year-olds would kill for. Until one day, telling her nothing, her parents whisk her off to Rio de Janeiro. Determined to find out why, Ella takes her chance and searches through their things and realises that her life has been a lie. I'm not going to say anything more than that, but that had me intrigued. Then we have Undercover Princess by Connie Glynn, and this is going to be part of the Rosewood Chronicles. And this is about someone who is obsessed with fairy tales. So when fairy tale obsessed Lottie Pumpkin starts at the infamous Rosewood Hall, she is now expecting to share a room with the Crown Princess of Madova, Ellie Wolf. Due to a series of lies and coincidences, 14-year-old Lottie finds herself pretending to be the princess so that Ellie can live a more normal teenage life. That sounds really interesting, bit of role reversal. Next we have Trust Me by Zosia Wand, and this is an adult mystery thriller novel, and it just says, who can you trust if you can't trust yourself? I'm not even gonna say anything more than that, but that is such a true statement. Who can you trust if you can't trust yourself? I can't wait to get stuck into this one, and it comes out early October. Next we have the sequel to The Thousandth Floor, and that is The Dazzling Heights. And again, the covers on these books are just absolutely stunning, aren't they? Then we have Where the Dogs Go by Janelle Martin, and this is a YA novel, and it says here, we have all heard about the Rainbow Bridge, but often wonder what it is like. Do animals just sit and wait for their earthly families? Do they run and play together until we get there? Is there perhaps something more to their lives in the next universe while they hope to see us again? Do they reconnect with animals they have known on Earth? These are some of the many questions we ponder when one of our beautiful fur friends leaves this world and moves on to the next. Where the Dogs Go brings a new take on this age-old question and lets us not only explore how animals bond with us here on Earth, but provides an entertaining concept of what they may do in the next realm. Next we have Strangers, which is the first book in the Reckoner series by David A. Robertson. And this is a YA novel that isn't out until March 2018. So you've got a long time to wait for this one. And this one says, when Cole Harper is compelled to return to wounded Sky First Nation, he finds his community in chaos, a series of shocking murders and mysterious illness ravaging this, the residents and re-emerging questions about Cole's role in the tragedy that drove him away 10 years ago. With the aid of an unhelpful spirit, a disfigured ghost and his two oldest friends, Cole tries to figure out his purpose and unravel the mysteries he left behind a decade ago. Will he find the answers in time to save his community? Then we have Anything You Do Say by Gillian McAllister. And this is coming out on the 25th of January, and this is another adult mystery thriller. And it says that this is Gone Girl meets Sliding Doors in this edge of your seat thriller. And I'm not going to tell you anything about it because I don't want to potentially risk that description maybe giving something away. So next we have Marriage Made Me Do It by Ashley Fontaine. And this comes out later this month. And this is a thriller about one's housewife's de descent into madness. So addictive you won't be able to put it down. It's time to break the rules. My name is Roxy Davenport and I'm part of a dying breed. I'm the perfect housewife. My whole life I've tried to follow the rules of previous wiser generations. High school sweethearts must marry. Check. The wife must stay home to look after the children. Check. All married couples must procreate and raise 3.2 children. Demerit. We only managed one. Oop. But it turns out, all the while, my husband has been playing his own rules and playing around. So screw him. I've chucked the handbook out of the window. He has no idea what's coming for him. And my perfect neighbourhood will never be the same again. I cannot wait to see how this woman gets revenge and just how far it goes. Next we have The Limehouse Gollum by Peter Aykroyd. And this is becoming a major film starring Bill Nighy. And so I thought I'd better pick this up ASAP. I don't know whether the film's out yet or not, but either way, like, this is one you need to watch out for. Then we've got The Snowman by Joan Nesbo. 
And again, this one is being turned into a film soon and that's going to have Michael Fassbender in it. And so I, both of these books were mystery kind of thriller novels and I thought I'd better get to them before I end up in, watching the film with friends or something. And then we have The Crow Garden by Alison Littlewood. And this comes out early October and this is described as Susan Hill meets Wilkie Collins. And I loved Wilkie Collin Collins, the woman in white. That was like such a fantastic classic for me. If you're not daunted by fat classics, really, really beastly ca classics, and you love a good sort of mystery, thrillery kind of book, then that might be the classic for you. This says, Haunted by his father's suicide, Nathaniel Kerner walks away from the highly prestigious life of a consultant to become a mad doctor. He takes up a position at Craigthorn Asylum, but the proprietor is more interested in phrenology and his growing collection of schools than the patient's minds. And I'm sure this is going to be a really, really kind of creepy read. Then we have The 13th Reality by James Dashner. And I didn't actually even know this existed. I didn't realise he'd wrote anything other than the Maze Runner series. So uh, this is something that's been around quite a while and that is being republished. So yeah, if you've read this, let me know if it's any good in the comments below. But it says, how lucky that you've found my message. Reality is in danger of splitting all the seams and I hope you have the courage of heart to help. You will soon receive 12 clues, solve them and face an important destiny. Don't and many lives will be at risk. The decision is yours. Next we have How Hard Can It Be by Alison Pearson. And this is an adult fiction novel. And it says, Kate Freddy is back. This is the follow up to the international bestseller, I Don't Know How She Does It. The novel that defined modern life for women everywhere. Then we have The Hanging Girl by Eileen Cook. This is our middle of October and this says two girls, one fatal reading because the truth always lies in the cards. And then we have The Summoner by S.D. Grimm. This is another YA novel that comes out in a couple of days time. Um, tomorrow actually as you're watching this I think. Yeah. And this is when Ali's best friend dares their group to play a game in the cemetery, something she calls witching. Ali never expects that, what it might mean for her when she plays. She doesn't just find bodies, she summons their souls, but one soul wants more than Ali is willing to give. Then we have We Can't Be Friends by Cindy Etler. And this is out at the beginning of October too. And this is the follow-up to Chinley Etler's chilling memoir, which was The Dead Inside. Then we have Remember Me Always by Rini Collins and this is a YA novel about first love and loss and Shelby's memory tree may have made her mind forget but her heart still remembers. Then we have We All Fall Down by Natalie Richards. This is a YA mystery thriller novel. I love that cover, it really caught my eye. And it says Theo and Paige are desperate to forget the night that tore them apart but someone is playing wicked games with them to make them remember. Then we have an adult historical fiction horror, which is The Lost Village by Neil Spring. This one really stood out to me. And this is from the genius behind ITV's The Ghost Hunters. This haunting novel is inspired by real historical events and features the notorious real life ghost hunter, Harry Price. Then we have Fierce Kingdom by Jin Phillips. And this actually came out at the end of July. And this is a novel about the primal and unyielding bond between a mother and her son and the length she'll go to protect him. The zoo is nearly empty as Joan and her four-year-old son soak up the last few moments of playtime. They are happy and the day has been close to perfect. But what Joan sees as she hustles her son towards the exit gate my, uh, minutes before closing time sends her sprinting back into the zoo. Her child in her arms and for the next three hours the entire scope of the novel she keeps on running. Now I've heard mixed things about this but I'm going to be starting to read this one hopefully probably tomorrow and I'm going to be buddy, buddy reading it with Aoife over at Fred Weasley Died Laughing and we can't wait to get stuck into this one. I actually only discovered this book yesterday and she was like have you seen this and I was like oh that sounds good and then I was like let's buddy read it this weekend. Yeah and finally in this haul I have got The Surrogate by Louise Jensen. And this is an adult thriller novel and this one caught my eye yesterday because that cover just like, I was like, oh God, what's with the, the baby booties? And so from there I read this and was like, I've got to read this. So it says, you know that feeling when you want something so badly you almost feel you'd kill for it. Be careful what you wish for. 
Kat and her husband Nick have tried everything to become parents and are on the point of giving up. Then a chance encounter with Kat's childhood friend Lisa gives Kat and Nick one last chance to achieve their dream. But Kat and Lisa's history hides dark secrets and there is more to Lisa than meets the eye. As dangerous cracks start to appear in Kat's perfect, nature, uh, perfect picture of happily ever after, she realises that she must face her fear of her past to save her family. Ooh. And so that, I can't believe I'm finally at the end of that book haul. That wasn't quite so bad, was it? I don't even ache. I am going to try and cut down for next month. I say that every month, but at least I cut, cut down on the buying, so now I just need to cut down on the requesting. If you've made it to the end, well done. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me to say if you want to see more book reviews and other bookish content from me. And I will see you tomorrow with a book review. Bye-bye.